If you really learn all of this, you will know 90% of what matters today. Is what Yulia Suskeva, former OpenAI chief scientist, said when John Carmack asked for a reading list in AI. The list consists of approximately 30 papers, blogs, books, and courses. And although it is a little bit outdated at the time of recording this video, because this conversation happened back in 2020, I believe that it still is an incredible reading list that everyone interested in this field should at least know that it exists. Thus, in this series of videos, I will try my best to extract the gist of each item in this reading list and then explain it to you. Also, I would like to keep things simple and short while also letting you dive deeper into the topics before releasing each part. Therefore, I will present only 5-6 items in the reading list per video. So, let's get started and let's see what the first 5 works are about. The first item in the list is the annotated transformer, which presents a simplified version of the attention is all you need paper by reordering and deleting some sections together with a line-by-line -line implementation of the transformer architecture. My personal opinion is that this is a very good read if you want to dive deep into how the transformer architecture is implemented. Also, I have a video which explains how the attention mechanism works if you want to learn more about this subject. Now, moving on to the second item in the list, which is a blog post by Scott Aronson that talks about the so-called first law of complexodynamics, which says that, in contrast to the second law of thermodynamics, which says that the entropy of an isolated system always increases in time, the complexity first increases and then decreases, and he illustrates this using a cup of coffee, which, when the milk and coffee are separated, it has a low entropy and complexity. Then, when we start to mix the two, we have a medium entropy and a high complexity. And finally, when our coffee is ready, we have a high entropy but again a low complexity. The author then goes into trying to formalize this law using mathematical terms and I invite you to dig deeper into this if you found this concept of complexodynamics interesting. The next item in the reading list is also a blog post, but this time by Andrew Carpati, titled The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Recurrent Neural Networks. And this is the first item that I've personally read long before making this video. In this blog, Andrew talks about how he is mesmerized by recurrent neural networks, which is a type of neural network designed to handle sequential data. And he digs deep into their inner workings, discussing the importance of memory backpropagation and how you can try to understand what neurons try to do when they process the input text. So yeah, if you want to learn more about recurrent neural networks, you can definitely take a look at this blog post. The next item is again a blog post which is a step-by-step -step walkthrough long short-term memory networks which is a type of neural network that tries to solve the vanishing radian problem in recurrent neural networks. That's yet another blog that I've read long before making this video and I remember it was the one who made the LSTMs click for me. So yeah, definitely give it a go. Also, I have a video about LSTMs where I dive deeper into the mathematics of this model. So you can also check out this one. Staying on the topic of recurrent neural networks, we now have a paper, Recurrent Neural Network Regularization, which argues that the correct way of using dropout in recurrent neural networks is to apply it only to the non-recurrent connections. Why? Because we don't want to randomly erase information from the past from one timestamp to the next one. The paper is quite short and easy to read if you already understand how these types of neural networks work. So definitely give it a go if you want to dive into this topic. And that's basically it for the first part in the series. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and please let me know what you think about this new series in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the new parts I'm going to release. See you in the next one. Bye bye.